Greetings, hackers and hacktivists. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. As a mere baby in arms, I was oblivious to the difficulties of early 80s computing. The teens of the age, now greying men and women in their 40s, cut their teeth on making limiting hardware all but sing. And in the case of the Commodore 64, actually sing. It was almost as if they could see the code in their mind's eye. Which brings me to today's topic, Swordfish. Released in 2001, Swordfish is the story of a convicted hacker being lured into one last job by a mysterious double agent. The film saw only a modest profit, despite the fact of featuring a soundtrack produced by famous DJ Paul Oakenfold and an infamous outing for Halle Berry's breasts. So crack your knuckles and fire up the command line, because today's password is... Swordfish. Meet Stanley Johnson. Formerly the world's best hacker, he now makes a modest living greasing pumps. Until Ginger arrives, that is. And she won't take no for an answer. Ginger offers Stanley $100,000 to meet her boss, and the chance for Stanley to gain custody of his estranged daughter. Deciding he has nothing to lose, Stan goes with Ginger to meet Gabriel. Gabriel needs a hacker. The kind of hacker that can make the best in the business look like novices. Fortunately for them both, Stanley has the preternatural ability to visualise code in his mind's eye. And so, Stan is recruited to build a worm program to siphon money from a secret government account. Gabriel introduces Stan to his home system. Ah, Hollywood. Your need to jazz up computing is absolutely terrible. The next day, Stan goes to see his daughter. You know, it's not so hard to believe that hackers make good family men. I mean, I know a few hackers with kids. And they're lovely, lovely people. Of course, that's over Sweden way, but that's a story for another time. Enter FBI agent J.T. Roberts. Roberts has been tracking our man for a while, and offers his own deal to Stan. Which is, of course, that Stan gets full custody of that kid. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd swear that the movie revolved around that kid. Anyone mentions her and Stan falls faster than Superman on wash day. Back at Gabriel's house, Ginger isn't what she appears to be. I'm DEA, Stanley. Over coffee, Gabriel explains the job. Operation Swordfish. The DEA set up dummy corporations to collect evidence on the drug trade and launder the money it made. However, these corporations became rather profitable. And those profits didn't just disappear when the operation was shut down. No, they were completely forgotten about, and have been earning interest ever since. And now there's over $9 billion on which Gabriel has set his sights. Yes, folks, this all boils down to a high-tech bank heist. What a flipping anticlimax. Could have been worse. Could have been a Marx Brothers reference with no bearing on the plot at all. But Gabriel's boss is wary of FBI involvement. Yes, Gabriel has a boss. A US senator even. But Gabriel isn't standing down, even in the face of the FBI. Meanwhile, Stan continues building the worm. Refreshing his... sustenance, Stan sees a ghost. And Gabriel explains. So what was up with that fake Gabriel body? Well, you never know when you need to fake your own death. Yes, misdirection. Example. Look, a bunny! <laughs> and now, while you were distracted, my appearance has changed. Right before they run into trouble. Trouble that Gabriel traces to his boss. Senator Reisman ordered a hit on Gabriel, which would stop the plan and keep all of this from ever being exposed. But Gabriel strikes first and shoots the senator dead, while he's out fishing even. The worm is delivered, 
and Gabriel finally reveals all to a disbelieving Stan. Long story short, Gabriel is a counter-terrorist. I don't mean he counters terrorism, I mean he counter-terrorises. Perturbed by the scale of the operation, Stan flees. And so the plan begins. Gabriel and his retinue sack the World Bank, and Gabriel stops off for a coffee and a chat before returning to work. And yes, I know this scene comes from the very beginning of the movie, but chronologically this is where it should go. And even here it doesn't really make that much sense. But oh dear, one of the hostages is freed, and that's bad news for the local area. Ooh, nasty. Inside the bank, father and daughter are almost reunited. Stan retrieves the lost money, but there's a sting in the tail. Our protagonist built a back door into the system, which deposits random amounts into random accounts once every minute, and will continue to do so for the next 10 years. The only problem is that it was supposed to be delayed for six hours, but it was at least enough to save that kid. But Gabriel always has another trick. Poor Ginger is strung up, and when the back door is closed, she's straight up shot. The hostages are moved onto a bus, and the bus takes to the sky. Just go with it. The movie's almost over. Eventually, the bus lands. But Stan's having none of it. And so, Stan's part in this tale ends as he drives off into the sunset with his beloved daughter. But shock! Ginger's alive! And so is Gabriel! You see? Misdirection. That fake corpse was found in the helicopter that Stan blew up. How Gabriel actually escaped? Well, a magician never reveals his secrets. What a way to end a movie! And it's certainly no way to get Swordfish into the House of Love. No, I can't put this movie in. But perhaps I should explain. I should explain that I class a bad film as one that objectively fails on every level. This movie does not. The hero is a classical everyman, the villain has all the charm and subdued menace one might expect, and the thought of an unfettered American patriot terrorist cell is frightening in light of the more recent formation of the Tea Party. Where it falls down, though, is that it's about hacking, which means Hollywood hacking. And it is a very humorless story, almost completely devoid of humour even. Ultimately, though, Swordfish isn't a bad film. It's nasty, violent, sweary and political. And also faintly ridiculous. But it is technically competent. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks.